Hey, what's up, Speed Tards? Uh, this is episode 23 of Futurism Forever podcast. Today will be our first foray into Russian futurism. Um, we're going to be reading and discussing the poetry of Mayakovsky. And uh, yeah, it should be good. Um, introduce the panel. We got Many Dogs, CSD, Alcaz, Melantip, and special guest Scythe. So, how's it going, guys? Hello. I'm pretty good. Hello. Pretty good. Yeah, I'm good. All right, that's good. That's good. Um, so uh, this is Scythe's, it's the second time on the channel. He was on the Halloween special um, back at Halloween time. Um, so this is his first, like, proper episode, though. So how's it going, Scythe? It's good to have you on again. Um, uh, I'm pretty good. I was reading uh, some Mayakovsky poems from my uh, book I got of his uh, collected works. Yeah, um, I, I've been like I ordered the book like a month ago, but it just came in last night. So yeah. I have not I have not read it all yet, which is why we're going to be focusing on the early poems more than the later ones. But uh, yeah. Um, so what have you been up to since Halloween time? I saw on Twitter that uh, you have a magazine in the works. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? or? Uh, yeah, it's basically you start off like a joke. When I was at work, I was just like, shit, I'm bored. Uh, there was all these old socialist magazines I used to read. And I was just like, well, if we did that now, a lot of uh, a magazine that's focused both on contemporary essays and um, art that promotes uh, independent uh art i guess um i don't know it's a magazine we're working on it right now trying to get a website up and uh our first issue out yeah uh, what, what kind of uh content are you going to be doing is it going to be politics or art or a little bit of both or? a little bit of both um one of the things that i want to do is be able to compensate artists for their art much like how old pulp magazines used to do with the writers and their artists how based off of how many issues are sold that's how much you're paid along with your base pay that's how i want to do it to promote uh independent artists and uh uh, non-corporate art okay basically we also like recently have an idea i don't know if it's going to come into fruition or not but like we're thinking about doing like an annual like zine kind of like an old school punk zine like kind of aesthetic like with the collage and like <laughs> kind of collage aesthetic and cut up rough around the edges but like it's going to be futurist and um you know, feature art from our friends, like similar kind of idea. So I, I was kind of like surprised to see you had a similar idea on Twitter today. Um, but yeah, I look forward to seeing your magazine and uh, yeah, hopefully ours comes into fruition too. Yeah. I, I, do, I do kind of want to answer this question from the audience before we start reading Mayakovsky because it's hilarious to me. Um, Sorry, my computer is being laggy. Um, Elon Bust is asking, what do you think about the Varg and Dasha feuding? Personally, I thought it was hilarious. I think it's the best thing to happen on Twitter in months um, just because it's two random people going head to head. Um, does anyone else have thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. Feud? Dasha BTFO Varg. Yeah, Dasha wins. What the fuck happened? <clears throat> Uh, from what I could gather, um, some some guy, I think his name was Conatist or something, was saying, like, it's leftists who fought for, like, better prison conditions in your country, bro. Like, why are you being a dick to communists or whatever? Um, and he was saying he preferred how the prisons used to be and, you know, the new prisons are – I don't know what he was trying to say. Oh, wait, Vargas talked about this a lot. Varg said he hates, like, the uh, new modern uh, liberal – like Norwegian prisons because they're really isolating and you get super fucking bored because they just like stick you in a single room and make you stay in there all day and they don't let you like interact with other people at all. Yeah. Uh, city, he said he preferred like the shitty rundown uh, Norwegian prisons because they put you with a bunch of other people so you could like <laughs> fucking get into fights and like hang out with other people and do crazy shit and the guards wouldn't care. 
it was yeah. way he said it was way more like hu- humanizing i guess but the other prisons he uh, he, he literally said that, that, that like people would hang themselves and stuff because it was so isolating for them yeah then then dasha pops up saying like varg wouldn't last a week in a belarusian prison because he'd be beaten to death because he lacks <laughs> uh spiritual strength and all this she, she starts going in on him basically and like yeah it just turns into this big thing um i thought it was hilarious though i think dasha btfo would <laughs> It was pretty obvious Dasha was trolling Varg because Dasha. I've seen Dasha talk about Varg before, even on Red Scare. Yeah, I don't know how familiar she is with him. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if she knows. She's who pretty. He is, fa- she's pretty familiar. She, she. I've heard her talk about him a lot. That that's right, Angelo. Varg wouldn't wouldn't survive American prison either. That's probably true. Um. Dude, okay, Varg literally escaped from prison like twice, so I don't know what you guys are talking about. You should look yeah, that but, up. Uh, Wait, why was he in prison in the first place? Yeah, so Varg was like, like jumped out of a car or some shit and like ran away. And they they went on a manhunt for him in like the Norwegian woods. Oh my god! Yeah. Uh, I, I remember when that happened. Um, back then, there was still a mystique to Varg because, like, he was this yeah, he, black metal dude that nobody really knew much about. Back in the early '90s, he killed Euronymous and burned some churches down. There was kind of a mystique to him. Like a little bit of mystery. We all read Lords of Chaos and shit, but there wasn't really that much information out about him other than like what you can learn in an afternoon. So there was a mystique. Then he became like, got out of prison and became an internet person and was on Twitter like picking fights with Med Gang and uh, Christians and everybody else and just pissing people off. And he had a YouTube channel. He became like an e boy or something. And, like, the mystique is gone. He's just, like, some asshole with shit he takes now. Um, who doesn't even make music anymore or do anything interesting, really. I guess he does My Farag and he's... Varg also got games, more prison but... time for stabbing somebody in prison, too. He got into fights all the time. <clears throat> you look yeah. at his court records and shit. He kept getting, he kept getting more time. He got extra years because he kept getting into fights with people. Okay, it's kind of basic. I'm going to lie. Yeah. He kept having gay sex with everybody. That's why he kept <laughs> Yeah, a- Angelo's talking shit. He became a welfare queen with his inbred children. His <laughs> wife is. Varg makes bank on my phone. Yeah, like, Varg like he... doesn't even. Varg actually collects welfare, but he's also like pretty wealthy. He just makes it through yeah, like. Uh, well, he makes it through like uh, music sales and his board game. I mean, I, I grew I grew up on Burzum, and, like, back in the 90s, they were, like, Burzum was just one guy, but, like, Burzum was one of my favorite bands in the 90s, and they still are, like, you know, I still respect Burzum. I like Varg the artist more yeah. than Varg the internet personality with shit takes, and who picks fights with uh, Belarusian girls and loses on Twitter, <laughs> but... I anyway. get butt broken by Belarusian women. <laughs> I, anyway. Yeah, Varg is, I like, Varg is like the anti-Jew. Like, everything Jew is, Varg isn't. Yeah, I'm a futurist. He's a primitivist, anti-Civ guy. Uh, I'm, like, kind of vaguely Catholic. He's pagan. Um, I'm Med Gang. He's Nord Gang. So... A lot of pagans actually hate Varg, though. Like, survive the jive and shit. He, like, beefs with all the other pagans. That's good. Because he's an asshole, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. There's still kind of a charm to Varg. I'll never, like, fully hate him. Even though he blocked me on Twitter. Fucking pussy. But anyway. What did you do? I I, I remember Survive the Jive was going to debate Varg's wife on paganism. And so uh, uh, fucking Varg's wife was like, I'm not going to debate you because I have to go to an internet cafe and there are too many non-whites. <laughs> oh, why did he block you, Geo? I forget exactly. He's blocked me a few times. Um, because you're a mad gang, bro. 
because I'm med gang, because I'm like vaguely Catholic, I'm not like practicing or anything, but when pagans like start fucking with Christians, I always defend Christians, especially like if it's Catholics, I just do. I feel like obligated to or whatever. I don't know why I'm not practicing. I'm kind of agnostic. Um, a couple of years ago, I really wanted to reconnect with the church and like, I still am reading the Bible and shit, but it's like, I just haven't made my mind up on the religion, the r actual religious stuff. I think like socially, there's a lot of benefits to the church. There's also a lot of problems with the church. It's a corrupt institution. Um, and, like the child molestation and shit is obviously a fucking problem. I don't think that shit's cool, but so like I'm conflicted as far as the religious question goes. I think it's kind of a dying institution and uh, yeah. Um, embrace the new ethical religion of speed um, instead is what I'd say on the futurist channel. Um, but yeah, I'm not here to talk about religion today. We're here to talk about Mayakovsky. So um, I don't know. Scythe probably like knows the most about Mayakovsky. Do you like want to introduce who Mayakovsky was to the audience before we uh, get yeah. the first poem? Uh, yeah, he was a uh, Russian futurist and a Bolshevik. He uh, left the party, and I believe the uh, Bolshevik faction of the uh, RSDLP and I believe 1911 after he got out of prison. Uh, but he did continue to support them. He did continue to pamphlet for them and uh, go to their events and uh, do his poetry there. Uh, I don't believe he, he never rejoined the party and he never joined the Communist Party when that became a uh, actual institution. But he did continue writing poems and uh, agitating for the Soviet state. Uh, I believe in 1917, he went to a meeting of the, uh, I don't know if it was a Metro, uh, Moscow Soviet or the Petrograd Soviet, but in one of their general meetings, he went and uh, advocated for a form of futurism known as a ComFU, which is short for communist futurism, because he believed that futurism was the only cultural phenomenon that could actually be proletarian rather than the pro cult which was being uh uh i guess maintained by the mainstream of the communist party okay that's a that's a good introduction um does anyone have anything they want to add to that before we read a slap in the face of public taste um he also helped a bunch of uh women of her prisoners uh uh, in Russian jails, get out of prison a few times. Yeah, I think and also uh, when, after his uh, death, his funeral was the third largest funeral in Russian history. So fun fact, yeah. right there. Yeah. I, I gotta be honest. I think Mike Halsey looks like uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, have you seen fucking pictures of him? A little bit. I watched one of his movies last night, uh, "The Lady and the Hooligan," and like, that's a good one. With, yeah, with like longer hair. I, I can definitely see the resemblance. Yeah, he wasn't just a poet either, by the way. He did like a lot of agitprop propaganda kind of artwork. Yeah. Um, he was in movies. Um, he, wrote he also movies. did theater. Yeah, he was a playwright. He did a lot of different things. Um, he's like most well known for his poetry, though. Uh, one of his a uh, theater a uh, theater a place he did like he wrote was a, a criticism of the bureaucratization of the Soviet Union and. And which is why the Soviet Union started to crack down on him. It's called yeah. the bathhouse. Yeah, I think I talked about that, that in uh, the October thing. And I quoted that, uh, the banner that he hung, because the uh, writer's union told him to uh, censor a bunch of the anti-bureaucrat stuff and the play. So he had a, a banner made that was basically just like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, I get the sense that Mayakovsky would have been way more approach was probably way more friendly to Trotskyism than like Stalinism. Uh, he was accused he, of being a part of the left opposition. It makes yeah. sense. He would be more of a Bolshevik Leninist than rather a Trotskyist, I would say. Uh, he probably wouldn't have fallen out like a lot of uh, early Trotsky supporters did after his death, uh, and probably wouldn't just became a big uh, Marxist. 
But uh, I think, to be honest with you, Stalin killed him. I'm going to be honest. Like, if you read the report by witnesses versus the official report that said he killed himself, uh, it comes out as a uh, political assassination. Also, he, he quote-unquote shot himself in the heart, which is kind of odd. Usually they shoot for the head when they kill themselves with guns. Yeah. Well, also, two gunshots were heard, and uh, the supposed reason why he killed himself doesn't add up to his attitude at the time. What was the reason? So, <laughs> Angelo, uh, you faggot, changed his profile to Stalin. You, I can't have you talk on my homie like that. <laughs> Dude, Stalin was such a shit leader. He literally only cared about his own power. Listen, you, I, I know you don't respect a good uh, struggle story, but come on. From thugging in the streets to thugging in the Kremlin... Stalin was born uh, the uh, <laughs> richest person, the, uh, a member of the richest family in his village. You what, should, like, in Georgia, he had, like, five more, like, potatoes than his <laughs> neighbor? Um, but the official reason why he killed himself in his suicide letter was uh, uh, his recent breakup with his longtime lover. Uh, I forgot her name, but she was married to another poet and uh, playwright who... Uh, uh, I also forgot his name, but he was also big within the writers' union, yeah, and was a, a close friend with uh, Mayakovsky. But something uh, Rick, I think uh, his name started with a B. I did some like yeah. I'm reading. Apparently, he was friends with. Uh, apparently, he was friends with the the girl's uh, husband too, who was okay yeah, with that's it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, he was, was a Jewish man, and uh, yeah, he kind of cupped the dude. Um, it was a bit of a polyamorous relationship. Like he knew Mayakovsky was doing this, but he didn't really do yeah, anything. Well, he about also it. he also had like his flings with other women. It was a lot, a very bohemian artistic fuck fest. Yeah, of just hedonism. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but at the time he did break up with her, but he was also excited to meet his daughter, who was in the U.S., uh, along with his one-time lover, who was also in the U.S. But he quote unquote killed himself before he could. Yeah. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to read the first poem. Um, for a little background, a slap in the face of public taste was like the debut performance of Mayakovsky and Russian Futurism. It's co written by David Berliak, Alexander Kruchenik. Kruchenik Mayakovsky and Viktor Klebnikov. Sorry for my Russian pronunciations, guys. But uh, yeah, this is like the equivalent of uh, the Futurist Manifesto to Italian Futurism. It's, it's much shorter and direct and to the point. But uh, anyway, without further ado, I'm going to read it and then we'll talk about it. Um, to the readers of our first of our new first unexpected. We alone was the face of our time. Through us, the horn of time blows in the art of the world. The past is too tight. The Academy and Pushkin are less intelligible than hieroglyphics. Throw Pushkin, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, etc. overboard from the ship of modernity. He who does not forget his first love will not recognize his last. Who trustingly would turn his last love toward Beaumont's perfumed lechery? Is this the reflection of today's virile soul? Who faint-heartedly would fear tearing from warrior Bryusov's black tuxedo, the paper armor plate? Or does the dawn of unknown beauty shine from it? Wash your hands, which have touched the filthy slime of the books written by the countless Leonid Andreevs. All those Maxim Gorkys, Krupins, Blocks, Solugubs, Remezovs, Averchnikovs, Chornies, Kuzmins, Bunins, etc. Need only a daka on the river. Such is the, rewar such is the reward fate gives tailors. From the heights of skyscrapers, we gaze at their insignificance. We order that the poet's rights be, re be revered. To enlarge the scope of the poet's vocabulary with arbitrary and derivative words, word novelty, to feel an insurmountable hatred for the language existing before their time. To push with horror off their proud brow the wreath of cheap fame that you have made from bathhouse switches. To stand on the rock of the word we amidst the sea of booze and outrage. 
And if for the time being, the filthy stigmas of your common sense and good taste are still present in our lines, these same lines for the first time already glimmer with the summer lightning of the new coming beauty of the self-sufficient, self-centered word. So that's uh, a slap in the face of public taste. Um, there's definitely a lot of parallels with Italian futurism, like the rejection of the past is just immediately there. Um, the lack of concern for popular tastes or, you know, the pleasure of Poor being books. booed. Yeah, the pleasure of being booed um, definitely comes to mind. I got a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> It reminded me a lot of like we reject our symbolist masters um, by Marinetti. Um, I caught a lot of that going on in here. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on the slap in the face of public taste? Open mic, like you know, it, it makes sense for why the Russian futurists became uh, Marxist because they were also like a progressive movement of the time, the biggest progressive movement of its time in Russia. So. It makes sense for why they ended up, many of them ended up going to communism. Uh, I mean, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I would probably say my favorite part of this uh, po of this uh, document that I always fucking kind of get goosebumps from is uh, to push with horror off their proud brow the wreath of chief fame that you have made from Baltas switches. Always found that to be really fucking good. Yeah. Um, Ro Pushkin, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, etc. Overboard from the ship of modernity. Uh, to quote Hawes, like, you know, he's trying to liquidate the past. Like, <laughs> it's, it's a reference to Sight's debate with Hawes yeah. where he says that uh, we <laughs> talked about that a lot on the Halloween stream. So he's still fucking got, I still don't know how the hell he got liquidationists and futurists fucking mixed up. <laughs> Yeah, what the fuck is a liquidationist? Uh, so basically, in the early days of the Bolshevik faction, not the Bolshevik faction, the uh, RSDLP in general, uh, there were two factions. The uh, I was going to call them the illegalists and the liquidationists. The liquidationists wanted to liquidate the illegal form of the party and more or less just become a mainstream electoralist party that was in favor of uh, reforming Russian society towards a uh, parliamentarian uh, type of government rather than the uh, absolute monarchy that continued to exist, while the illegalists, which would later become the Bolsheviks, continued pushing for a uh, revolutionary and um, underground kind of a legal party that wasn't above ground. <laughs> I see. It's interesting you got that confused. Yeah. But, yeah, he's, uh, probably, he's probably being a little bit intellectually dishonest. Um, I think I, I don't. I don't think he really. Yeah, like you said, knows about futurism or cares about it really. Um, he's kind of like trying to make communism more conservative and patriotic and all that. Um, he even says that like communism is a conservative movement we're supposed to be talking about Maya tops mayakovsky not haas though so i don't want to get too well, detailed kind of, with this but it, it kind of is important to marxism though and specifically futurism and why uh mayakovsky came yeah. to the belief that the destruction of the current state of things rather than the movement towards a uh, replacement for bourgeois culture rather than a destructivist culture is uh interesting and important yeah, I mean, futurism is not destruction for the sake of destruction. It's destroying the old world to make way for, like, a new world that exceeds the greatness of the old world. Yeah, it's life-affirming. It's, li it's, it's a life-affirming ideology. It, yeah. it wants, like, wants, like, a positive progress. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's what people don't understand when they associate futurism with, like, uh, Satanism or some shit. Like, it's not reveling in destruction or destruction for the sake of, like, evil or some shit. It's more yeah, like... Yeah, I've, uh, I've never understood... Um, someone, like... I forget who it was, Gio. You showed me. Some dude did, like, a podcast on futurism. He's, like, uh, satanic and all that. I never understood that. Like, it, uh, That's Dimes from Blood Satellite Podcast. And, like, we used to... 
I was trying to get like a Canadian, uh, mm -hmm. like nationalist group off the ground before I started Futurism Forever, but after I left New Frontier. And um, he was one of the guys who was involved in that. And we kind of had a parting of ways. And then a few months later, he makes this hit piece about Futurism and about me. He doesn't bring my name up in it, but like if you're paying attention, it's obviously about me. And like he'll admit it. I've confronted him about it but, in the past. He made up all kinds of bullshit. He tried to tie us in with Adam Waffen Division, even though we have like a podcast out about the American Futurist Manifesto, and we're all very critical of it. You know, I think we were fair to it. There are some good things in there, but for the most part, it completely misrepresented what futurism is. There's no emphasis on like the creative, the creative portion of futurism. It's just like nihilistic destruction and then replace it with nothing. Return to, you know, like the frontier in spirit or whatever. Um, Not to mention many of the people a part of American futurists, like the website who are former members of Adam Woff and her associates also accused us all of being closeted Hispanics and members of the ABP. Yeah, that was a different thing. That was like an American future. That came from the Pine Fags. Like after they raided us, they decided that Giovanni is uh, just LARPing as Italian. He's actually Mexican, which isn't true. Um, anyone who like knows me well enough knows who I am. Like I do show face often enough. I don't really look Mexican, but uh, it looks like you look the sh like you look like the shot of my run, dog. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I look like fully a tardo. So yeah. He you look like the last king of Scotland. Uh, Gee, anyway, I was like, don't offend me like that. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're getting too much into, like, drama. Like, I want to focus on Mayakovsky. Um, yeah, to enlarge the scope of the poet's vocabulary with arbitrary and derivative words. Like, Mayakovsky was into creating neologisms and making up new words for his poetry which makes his um, poetry extremely difficult to translate into English, apparently. Apparently, like, no translation really does justice to the original Russian. Um, so I'm reading a translation. I, I like right, that, so. though. It's like Shakespeare. Like, Giovanni hates Shakespeare. But I'm like, nigga, Shakespeare was fucking <clears throat> futurist as shit. He made up a whole bunch of words, and he was very revolutionary for his times. For his times, but like in the 21st century, we shouldn't be looking back at Shakespeare. Yeah, well, why the do... fuck are we looking back at Mayakovsky? Never, like, come on. Because he didn't wear goofy ass clothes. We should. <laughs> he kind of did. He wore like yeah. a, a yellow. He wore women's yellow... clothes, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? He wore a yellow leotard with a big bow tie made out of a curtain because he couldn't afford a. Uh... Because he couldn't afford like a proper tie or like proper suit, so like he just kind of had this makeshift outfit he wore. Um, apparently, like I was reading some of his biographical stuff last night. <laughs> My um, makeshift tie. <laughs> that is a difference between him and uh, Marinetti too. Like Marinetti came from money. Mayakovsky did not. Like he grew up in poverty. Well, and Mayakovsky was also like six foot two, while the average Russian was like five six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a, a really wow, wow thing. Giovanni. We found a uh, not a non manlet who you like. Yeah, he's like the only one. Um, yeah, Giovanni hates anybody who's about five foot four, five six. Anyone taller than me cannot be trusted. Wait, Giovanni, you're five <laughs> six. You're yeah, five, six. five six. Uh, oh, I'm taller, yeah. taller than you, boy. Yeah, it's Italian <laughs> jeans, don't it? Yeah, I, I was joking. I thought you were like dude, five foot nine, five ten. <laughs> no, I'm five six, dude. Shit, man, you're you're fucking as tall as my mom. Jesus. Even even dwarfs started small, bro. He was like, you should see my grandma. That bitch is probably like four <laughs> eleven. Yeah, like both of my grandparents are shorter than me. My my little brother's shorter than me. My older sister's a little taller, but we're all none of us are that tall. We're all pretty short. Um, being Italian and shit. Um, anyway, like least... you guys keep derailing the conversation from Mayakovsky to like other things. <laughs> it's neologisms. 
Let's move on to point two, uh, to feel an insurmountable hatred for the language existing before their time. So like that would be like my response to the Shakespeare thing that you brought up. I don't hate Shakespeare and his time and day is well and good, but he should be thrown off the ship of modernity as uh, Mayakovsky would put it. And like, we need to move on. Like we shouldn't be like looking up or like bowing down to these ancient <laughs> figures. Like it's not futurist. Futurists would move on and forget about that shit and do something new. No? No, I mean, yeah, yeah. I agree. As, as a futurist, you should definitely be moving forward past everything before. That's right, 5-6, gang. <laughs> Low IQ nationalist. Mo move to something better, not to fucking shitty rap music. Uh, we're not going to go there. I'm going to get another beer. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be back. You know, I personally only like drive over the speed limit when I'm driving, dog. Yeah. Uh, speaking, of that, speaking of the Hispanic thing, a couple of months ago, some Nazis accused me of being Mexican when I said uh, I don't fall race, I fall class. That's because all was, Nazis are Mexican at this point. Like, like what are you? What, like, how is that even an insult, Doc? Like, what it's about because Mexico? they thought it was you? <laughs> it's like all wordful. <laughs> they they keep confusing me and you, many dogs, because we sound similar. Damn. Yeah, I get confused with Elaine all the time. I mean, we don't even sound similar for some reason. I've gotten confused with fucking Lane OS. John like Murdoch. I, John Murdoch always confuses me with Rex for whatever reason. We don't look alike. We don't sound alike. I don't think, but I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> like that guy who tried to dox me was like fucking trying to dox Lane, thinking he was me. Really? Yeah. I didn't even know about it. Well, let's not get into all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Oh, let the past be the past. Water under the bridge. Let's move forward. <laughs> yeah, we gotta be future. Uh, uh, so, point three from this text: to push with horror off their proud brow the reef of cheap fame that you have made from the bathhouse switches. Um, thoughts on point three? It's obviously talking about uh, poets who are in it, not for the continuation of art or uh i guess um poems or even linguistics but rather just get pussy yeah the fame the money yeah the women all that they're in it for the wrong reasons not to create something great that stands the test of time or that really defines the era you know they just want to be safe um do things that they know are going to sell um, not take be risks. Politically correct, basically. Yeah, not be audacious, not be innovative. Just do the same old boring shit that people are going to consume, and create re really meaningless, empty art. Um, which you know, as an artist, I think you know you have to push the boundaries and you know test taboos, tr test the boundaries. Um, you know. Do, do different shit, you know? Don't be afraid of what people are going to think of it. Like, you know, don't be afraid to get booed or to be hated on and shit. It means yes. you're doing something right. Like The pleasure after of being all, booed. After exactly. all, the most cr creative of movements and artists and whatnot are the ones that make history in the end and are remembered for that matter. True. So let's move on to point four. Unless anyone else has something they want to say. We already covered point four, too, in a lot of ways. To stand on the rock of the word we amidst the sea of booze and outrage. So, yeah, just hold your ground. You know, don't let the haters get you down and shit. You know, it's better to be hated than ignored. If, like, people genuinely don't give a shit, like, they're not mad at it. They're not praising it they're not mad at it they're just kind of indifferent like as an artist or as anyone really like that's the worst place you could be just being ignored right so it's better to make a mark whether people like it or not you know there's all kinds of people who were hated in their time and people learned to like them after the fact so 
you know, or later on in their careers, you know. Or are fairly unknown in their time. And they yeah. end up becoming popular after their death. There's tons of those. Nietzsche was like way more popular after he died than when he was still alive. Yeah, because of I'm his pretty, sister. I, I'm pretty sure Marx was also very similar in that way. No. He wasn't? Yeah. He was no, actually he popular? Was, yeah. Oh, okay. He was popular in manga, German and uh, philosophy, uh, I believe, French philosophy, English philosophy. Uh, he was well known in the U.S. Uh, early socialism in the U.S. was anti-Marxist until like, literally Marx got a did. letter from fucking from like Lincoln himself. It was more or less just like being like, "Yeah, cool, thanks for the support in the Civil War." Bye. <laughs> and it's believed that was like his secretary who wrote it, not actually Lincoln, but it was pretty big, I guess. Yeah, at least he got a response, though. Yeah. But, um... All right. <clears throat> Final thoughts on slap in the face of public taste before we move on? I th I'll say with this, I think it's it's a very big parallel to the uh, pleasure of being booed by Marinetti. I see parallels to it. I think it's kind yeah. of Mayakovsky's version of that. Yeah. Also, we reject our symbolist masters. I pick up on a lot of uh, overlap between those two texts and this one. Um, anyone else before I read the next one? All right, I'm going to continue then. Conversation with Comrade Lenin. A world with events packed with jobs one too many. The day slowly sinks as the night shadows fall. There are two in the room, I and Lenin, a photograph on the whiteness of wall. The stubble slides upward above his lip as his mouth jerks open in speech. The tense creases of brow hold thought in their grip. Immense brow matched by thought immense. A forest of flags raised up hands thick as grass. Thousands are marching beneath him, transported, alight with joy. I rise from my place place eager to see him hail him report to him comrade lenin i report to you not a dictative office the heart's prompting alone this hellish work that we're out to do will be done and is already being done we feed and we clothe and give light to the needy the quotas for coal and for iron fulfill but there is any amount of bleeding muck and rubbish around us still without you there's many I've got out of hand. All the sparing and squabbling does one in. There's scum and plenty hounding our land, outside the borders and also within. Try to count them and tab them. It's no go. There's all kinds, and they're thick as nettles, kulaks, red tapists, and down the row. Drunkards, sectarians, lick spittles. They strut around proudly as peacocks. Badges and fountain pens, studding their chests. We'll lick the lot of them, but to lick him is no easy job, at the very best. On snow-covered lands and on stubbly fields, in smoky plants and on factory sites, with you in our hearts, comrade Lenin, we build. We think, we breathe, we live, and we fight. A world with events, packed with jobs one too many. The day slowly sinks as the night shadows fall. There are two in the room, I and Lenin, a photograph on the whiteness of wall. So that's the poem. Um, thoughts on his conversation with Comrade Lenin. I like it a lot. I think it's a very like lyrically sound poem. It gets, yeah. it gets, it gets, it, you know, gets across the message of like, uh, just kind of opening his heart to Lenin, I guess. It was kind of a, an homage to Lenin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you read it, you can definitely see his disdain, and uh, this is one of the reasons why he was accused of being in the left opposition, because in it, he's literally calling for the overthrow of the bureaucracy by the proletarian, which is one of the uh, demands of the Fourth International after the collapse of the uh, left opposition. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why it's my favorite poem by Mayakovsky. I think I told you this when you asked for a recommendation of what you guys should read tonight, yeah. uh, is the fact that it was the most honest and uh, 
open forms of reveration to Lenin and who he was at a time when the image of Lenin was becoming more deified and uh, falsified by the red bureaucrats and the uh, peacocks and, as he said, the kulaks. Because at that time, the kulaks and the Communist Party were in their uh, class alliance, I guess. This was at the time where the USSR was supporting independent farming and uh, uh, not cooperatives, but the kulaks' attempt at taking over the smaller peasant cooperatives in hopes of uh, not causing a second civil war, uh, which was something that Trotsky... uh, called a folly but that's something we can talk about another time but definitely one of my favorite Mayakovsky poems yeah I like this one a lot too Um, um, this is this is the part of the episode where we talk about Mayakovsky's politics and um, you know Leninism versus Stalinism versus uh, Trotsky um versus like marxist leninism um all that stuff um i never really went through like a communist phase so like i'm under read on the subject but uh i don't know i i like this one because like it's like a love poem to lenin like he's a, a leninist um you know he's loyal to lenin he, he doesn't really care for uh, other elements that are going on around him, um, which, you know, in the Soviet Union gets you into hot water for, you know, having <clears throat> takes that are a little bit controversial. So um, I don't know. Does, does anyone have thoughts on all this or? Uh, on the politics or on the Angelo. Yeah, Angelo, you're um, on the politics, on the poem, whatever. Like, it's an open discussion. So, uh, Angelo's oh, like I a Stalinist. Open... So, I wanted him to come on because, like, to make it a little spicy, because he's going to be like the one guy who defends Stalin. Like, Stalin kind of fucked over the futurist, man. It's a futurist channel. I like Angelo and all that, but it's like, if you're a futurist, you can't like Stalin, bro. Like, he's. He's the enemy. In yeah, Stalin opinion. was a trash bag. And if you're like liking Hitler yeah. as a futurist. Yeah, exactly. Like he literally banned futurism. Like, yeah, we no, we don't you can't reconcile futurism with Hitlerism. It doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. Um and I like on the compute side, I kind of feel like Stalin is like a similar figure to Hitler on the compute side. But I could be totally off base on that. Um, is that accurate to say, Sight? Uh, Yeah, kind of. The uh, purges they did against the futurists, uh, the kind of allegations he made that all futurists were part of the left opposition, even though that's not really a wrong statement. Um, his uh, rejection of uh, destroying the past in favor of preserving the past in a kind of... Uh, socialist patriot homunculi and other shit like that definitely contradicts futurism and the uh, not early to, not to mention he went back on like things like religion and the family too like just yeah yeah uh yeah but, like, which actually makes me ask the question who do you think was more right in supporting the the Soviet Union, the Russian National Bolsheviks and Eurasianists, or the Russian Futurists? And supporting the USSR? Yeah, and like supporting the USSR and believing it would lead to their end goals. Like, who do you think was more right? Uh, The Futurists. If you read, uh, Mayakovsky wrote something that's kind of on the subject called uh, My Soviet Passport, which is about his disdain for the bureaucratization of the uh, USSR, the amount of power that was being taken away from the Soviets, the centralization of the uh, of power from workers to the state, uh, the uh, flip-flopping and falsifications of Marxism. Uh, there's uh, definitely all of that in it, but then at the end he says, but I'm still proud to carry my Soviet passport, which was, which is a sign of the uh, first workers' republic in existence. Uh, from what I understand, um, to me it's not about like 
a moral question, but rather on how it turned out. I think the Russian national Bolsheviks were more correct. It turned out into something they wanted more than what the Russian futurists wanted. Uh, I, the Russian national Bolsheviks had like two years where they were uh, treated warmly, like Ustrolov and shit. If you know who I'm talking about, but like they were killed. Yeah. They were killed after the, uh, you know, when the Molotov ribbon trap. Ribbentrop Pact happened. The Russian National Bolsheviks were killed or expelled. Like Ustrolov was killed by the NK- was co- tortured and then killed by the NKVD, and all his contacts were fucking killed or put in yeah. gulags. So even the National Bolsheviks were killed by Stalin in the end. Like Stalin killed anybody who he even remotely saw as a threat. But in the end, they ended up. Stalin ended up doing what exactly what they wanted him to do in the end. So that's the irony there. Uh, to a certain extent, I guess. Yeah. I, I know, like, during the Brezhnev era, a lot of nationalists would, like, write supportive things about the Soviet Union, but really, in reality, they weren't communists. They just said positive things about communism so their works could be uh, published. And after the Soviet Union collapsed, a lot of them just turned back to monarchists or Christian traditionalists and things of that nature. Yeah, like, it seems to me like they didn't have any, like, real loyalty to the ideology or the revolution, you know. The, 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 those are the real politics that surrounded them at the time. So it's a good idea to, like, for self-preservation to kind of warm up or present yourselves as favorable to. But, I mean, judging by this poem, like... <clears throat> Mayakovsky was a firm believer in Lenin and his ideas and um, him as a man. And it's like, he's saying like, it's for Lenin that we fight, that, you know, we work, that we breathe. Like we live for Lenin and his ideas. Um, Whereas like the more traditionalist types, like, you know, it seems very opportunistic. Like they're just hopping on because it's in their self-interest to do so, but it's very fake. And, um, you know, yeah, so it well, some of, them your that, like, some of them believe that like the, the that Bolshevik socialism would industrialize Russia in a way that Western liberalism wouldn't and would and would not have the degrading effects that Western liberalism had. So some of it wasn't opportunistic, though, like when it comes to OG Russian national Bolsheviks. I mean, that, I mean, that was kind of the position Marinetti was in in Italy. Um with like Mussolini and like, yeah, he was a supporter early on, but he kind of distrusted Mussolini. He tried to warm up with the communists, but like they didn't like his ultra nationalism, his glorification of war and all this stuff. Um, Apparently Bramsky like thought communists should embrace futurism though. Cause like they're saying things that are important. And if we reject them, then they're going to turn to the fascists and we're going to lose the futurists. Um, to draw a parallel with Italy, which I know more about, but uh, um, many dog, do you want to talk about like Gramsci and his thoughts on futurism a little bit? Um, I mean, all, all I know is like he like wrote just like a like an essay on on like the futurist once, and they and, and you already like went on about it. Like that's all like we all know about what Gramsci thought of futurism. I, I do know he was militantly against fascism. From his like yeah. debate with like kind of debate semi debate with Mussolini, yeah, he he did like futurism though, um, at least to a certain extent, or saw like some potential or something that he could use for, you know, what he was doing, um, and like yeah, Marinetti really only warmed up to like Mussolini um, when it became clear that Mussolini was going to take power, and uh, you know he wanted a good place for futurism in the regime. Um, but for a while, like he had split from the fascists and was like trying to get along with the communists. It didn't really go too well, though, for the reasons I already mentioned. He, they didn't like the ultra nationalism or the militarism or um, that kind of stuff, which is important to futurism, in my opinion. Um, the Russian is- futurists, uh, unlike the Italian futurists, actually did not support uh, World War One, but they did support the Bolshevik Revolution. Yeah, um, that makes sense. So. Yeah, the the Italian communists didn't support World War One either, um, but the futurists definitely did. There so are, 
That's why there Mussolini is, broke with yeah. the Italian Communist Party. It was over. Participation in World War One. There, there are a lot of stylistic differences between like Russian futurism and Italian futurism too. Uh, like Russia had its own tradition in Cubism, and um, like their futurist works were kind of like an offshoot of that or like a continuation of that. Whereas in Italy, they were looking to other sources like divisionism or pointillism was like very um, important. I'm getting into like the art though and. I don't know. This is supposed to be the pol the politics side well, of the discussion, but well, to be fair to the Russian, I mean the Italian futurists, and even very early Mussolini when it comes to World War One, they supported the war for very progressive reasons, believing that it would destroy the older institutions. Mussolini actively talks about this in his first few speeches after he left the Socialist Party. Yeah, but man, how much of that shit is true? Just like post hoc justification, like I don't know. I don't know. They was right though. They did get rid of those fucking gay ass monarchies. Well, not in Italy, and that's what did uh, fascism in in the end is they didn't get rid of the monarchy. They weren't revolutionary enough because of Mussolini and his compromises. The monarchies the end up doing everybody in at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, to be fair, the the war did like destroy like the German monarchy, which Mussolini's hoped it would and the russian monarchy too uh yeah. and also the austro-hungarian one too yeah i was just about to bring bring that up it, it just didn't happen in italy where Mussolini needed it to happen yeah in origins and doctrine of fascism i brought this up before but like um in origins and doctrine of fascism gentile talks about why world war one why like fascists supported it to a lesser extent, why futurists supported it, but like it's kind of implied. Italy is a new nation, and you need shared struggles to unify a nation. Like it helps build a shared mythos, a shared history. It helps like unify a people together in a shared struggle. So like yeah, yeah, yeah. To that. Um, I, I think that is a big reason why the futurists were so gung ho about World War One. Well, World like, War One like, is pretty futurist. <laughs> yeah, well, it was like the futurist war. I mean, yeah, it, it literally brought in new weapons of war that changed warfare and like ended a whole decades of governance. Yeah, Marinetti said that like warfare is the truest form of modern art or whatever. Like you saw beauty in it. it that um, it is when you see the most technological advancements because it's like war war's fast. Everything's on a need like right now. So things get developed pretty fast. Yeah. If, if you're slow, you're probably not going to last too long. So. <laughs> exactly. Ironically, World War One was a pretty slow war. It was all fucking trench warfare. Yeah, they were in gridlock and barely moving anywhere. But there That's was new technologies technology used set up to speed up the killing. Yeah. Like, like the if you'd study the Italian and Austrian front in the Alps, that shit was so fucking slow. They moved like ten feet a fucking day. At most, it was insanely slow. <clears throat> so back to the text. Um, any final thoughts on conversation with Comrade Lennon before we move on to the next poem? Or... I'll take that um, as a no. no. Uh, okay, all right. So the next one I want to read is um, A Monstrous Hell of a City. It's on page 32. Give me a sec here. Um, <clears throat> okay, A Monstrous Hell of a City. Windows smash the monstrous hell of the city into tiny hells sucking with light. Red devils, automobiles heave, blasting horns right into your ear. And there, under the street sign for Kerch Herring, an old man knocked down, groped for glasses, and started crying when the tram, going full speed in the evening whirlwind, swept up its pupils. In the gaps of skyscrapers, where ore was blazing, and the iron of trains piled up at a tunnel, an aeroplane screamed and fell, where the injured son's eyes was dripping out. And only then, wadding up the blanket of street lamps, Night loved itself out, smutty and drunk, and nowhere behind the street suns, 
hobbled a flaccid moon, wanted by no one. So that's that poem. I get a lot of... Uh, that, that seems like an anti-city poem, man. Makes cities look pretty evil. I don't know about that. Did you did you see the quote I posted on the channel last night from Mayakovsky? Like, he was pro-city. Um, Maybe, but that specific poem seems like an anti-urban thing. I mean, it's literally toxic. Uh, like, say, say the title of the, of the poem again. A monstrous hell of a city. <laughs> uh, uh, even the title, man. I don't know. It's a, it's a, there's a little bit of urban decay going on there. Um, I, I don't think my cost. Let me was let me find this. I think, quote, he, though, I think he was uh, showing. I I think he was showing the bad side of cities in that poem. I don't know. That that's. I don't say you could see have that be a pro urban poem. Did, like, Moscow have skyscrapers at that time? Because I kind of think they didn't. Like, skyscrapers were mostly in New York and Chicago and, like, yeah, fuck newer no, American did. cities. Moscow um, did not have skyscrapers. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to read this quote on, on cities from Mayakovsky. We are familiar with tunnels of streets and their movement, noise, thunder, flashing, eternal gyrations. The rhythm of life has changed. Everything has become lightning-like, transient, like a reel of film. The smooth, peaceful, unhurried rhythms of the old poetry doesn't correspond to the psyche of the modern citizen. Feverish activity, that's the tempo of modernity. In the city, there are no smooth or even circular lines. Corners, fractures, zigzags, that's what characterizes the image of the city. Poetry must comply with the new elements of the modern city's psyche. So to kind of put this poem in context, he definitely was not anti-city. Um, it's just like a bad trip in a fucking city that he happens to be in at the time. Yeah, I, I don't think he's anti-city, but I definitely think that that poem was showing like the bad side of cities. I, I assume he's in Moscow when he's writing this. So he's being critical of Moscow because it's an old city or something. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe the reason why he supported communism was also to like destroy like these like slums and cities and hope make them more wealthy and more nicer looking. Just some food for thought. <laughs> That's gentrification, nigga. <laughs> was that? Did they even the next... call it that that back then? <laughs> Uh, I, I doubt I that know. word existed back then. But. I I think so because gentrification comes from the term gentry. Yeah, it gen is like an old term. Yeah, I think it's a very old. <laughs> term. I can actually picture some like bougie ass people like it's time we gentrify this neighborhood. Yeah, to make it livable for the gentry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure the term existed, but like, was it used in the same context or? Yeah. And would it have the same effects of gentrification in a capitalist society? You know. Yeah, I'm sure the meaning I mean, behind it was completely fun. different. Yeah. What's up, Melon Tip? Um, Alcaz dropped that. Hello. Just, just reintroducing Melon Tip is back. Jesus I'm Christ. Awesome. Christ. Do you, uh, you've been listening. Do you have any thoughts so far on what we've read? Um, okay, to, first to say I'm kind of a little bit drunk, so I didn't get everything. Uh, second of all, <laughs> you're always drunk. Um, I really liked the love letter to Lennon. It was like, he really loved Lennon. Like, it was so beautiful and not yeah. gay. It was like a love letter to Lennon. It's like no, no homo, write, but no homo. You know. I should write something like this for Codriano. It was just some real homie shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love Conrad Lennon? <laughs> uh, Nazis because he's Jewish. But they don't exist anymore because the NKVD sent killed them. It's true, true, true. Damn. The head of the NKVD. I thought he was like, isn't he? Is he ethnically Jewish or is he like ethnically like Chumash? No, I thought he was um, part Jewish and that was it. I thought yeah, he did, was like did, Chumash, did. which is like Russian mestizos, like Turkic whites. 
David Duke likes to play up his Jewishness. That's all I know. But I like uh, to play up David Duke's Jewishness. His uh, his like great great grandma was like Jewish. But they yeah, that was know, what I was about to say. He was only like a fourth of a fourth Jewish, and that was that was it. Yeah, Jewish not really, by association. Not really that big of a yeah. deal. Um, you know, we're not anti-Semitic here, anyways. We don't give a shit. <laughs> but you know, um, I don't know. Melons have felt like bringing that up. So yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, hey, you asked who do, doesn't like Lenin. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't describe myself as a Leninist, but I thought it was a beautiful poem. Like, you know, he's devoted to um, this man and his ideas. And I think we can all relate to that. We might have different figures, but there's still something touching about the poem, I think. <clears throat> Uh, what about a beautiful or this horrible monstrous city? What was it called? Um, I yeah, you got the name right. Uh, I don't monstrous, remember. Monstrous hell of the city. Um, I'm too drunk. I like the last stanza, and only then, wadding up the blanket of street lamps, night loved itself out, smutty and drunk, and somewhere behind the street suns hobbled a flaccid moon, wanted by no one. Which reminds me of uh, We Must Murder the Moonlight by Marinetti. I think I'm fucking with that a lot, but Let's Murder the Moonlight, that one. Um, Maybe. You know, the hobbled of flaccid moon wanted by no one. What do you think he means by flaccid moon? There's also like some imagery, like comparing the street lights to uh, suns. So there's like some sun moon imagery going on there. And flaccid, the moon is flaccid, like it's it's limp, it's weak, it's uh it's not vital. Um it's not like, futurist. Um, the moon is traditionalist and therefore it must be destroyed. Something mm. like that. The moon has been here for too long. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You've been dealing with this bullshit for too long, it's so tedious, like Re revolt against the moon. <laughs> How can we be moving forward if everyone's sleeping at night? <laughs> yeah. We need people up at 24-7. Yeah. I don't see a problem with that. Um, I'm going to go grab a beer. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. Don't let it be dead air. Among <laughs> us. Oh. Uh, yeah. Alcaz is soy raging in the private chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, because it's doing it right. Wait, why did he? Why did he? Why did he, the thing he so, just Seth, I got a question for you, like a personal question. Uh, why yeah. do you call yourself a Bolshevik Leninist instead of a Trotskyist? Because I always thought they were the same. I got a Jolly Man Rancher in my mouth right now. I need to swallow real quick. Uh, so basically, uh, Bolshevik Leninism as a concept existed before Trotskyism became a uh, thing. Uh, I consider Trotskyism to have been formed uh, post Trotsky's death. Uh, Bolshevik Leninism didn't encompass just Trotsky; it encompassed uh, uh, multiple different people, specifically everyone in the left opposition, which. Of course, Trotsky was the de facto leader of, but he even said himself, Bolshevik Leninism and the international left opposition is not a uh, mono theistic religion. It doesn't have one deity, it doesn't have one leader. Uh, if you have an opinion, you can put it forward and debate it. It wasn't like this dogmatic uh, reverence towards Trotsky. It was just a uh, opposition to Stalinist bureaucratization of the party. While after Trotsky's death, you see the shift within Bolshevik Lenin circles to a more reverence towards Trotsky as being a uh, kind of successor to Lenin rather than a contemporary, rather than a peer, as I see it. They treat Trotsky the same way Stalinists treat Stalin, uh, and then turn so the same way they treat like, um, Lenin. The, the people who like push 
tr- like Bolshevik Leninism in this direction. Would you say Mac Jackman was one of those people who did that? Uh, I'm not aware of who that is. Uh, Mac, Mac Jackman. Jackman. Yeah, Mac Jackman. He broke Name with like James familiar. Buchanan. Yeah, I think I know. Uh, yeah, I, I'm think I may have the wrong guy, but during the uh, founding of the Fourth International. The American section was told to join the Socialist Party and perform entryism in there, while a splinter group rejected this and continued to exist as their own independent organization rather than merge with the uh, Socialist Party. Uh, but they still identified as Bolshevik Leninist, and they considered that kind of compromise with uh, Sockdems to be in direct opposition to Bolshevik Leninism. Uh, I guess in Summary, I would probably describe Bolshevik Leninism a rejection of the dogmatic outgrowth that started growing around Trotsky and his followers after his death. I see. Yeah. If you want to read more, I wrote an essay that discusses what Bolshevik Leninism is uh, as compared to like Trotskyism. It's not uh, like could, this. Could you drop it in the private chat? Yeah, it's not like this 500-page like essay. It's like I think maybe 30 pages, and I don't go over every point, but I do try and go over uh, the gist. I could read it in a few days. Yeah, I write uh, like. No one is it cool if I bring Alcaz back on? Probably be fine. Like, how did I get yeah. into here? Uh, I I keep you in the wings. I wanted to like I'm gonna explain myself. All right. Like I wanted to let Angela on so the podcast isn't too like fascist heavy, um, because like Angelo's like our token Stalinist guy about like having a Stalinist on might like spice things up a little bit. We got fascists, we got Stalinists, we've got like anarchists, and we're all gonna. (laughs) And yeah, yeah. but yeah, um, that's why you got bumped for Angelo. Alcaz is like trying to get back in though. So I wanted to give you a while he was gone, give you a second to you know express yourself, share your thoughts. But he's trying to get can back. Keep, so can we sure, keep right Alcaz up. soy raging in the private chat? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Is he soy raging in the private chat? Like. The yeah, thing is, I have seven. I have seven people who want to be on, and only six slots. So it's like I can alternate. If someone drops out, I let Melon tip in and let him talk about what we talked about up to this point. So that's what I did. Alcaz, like, don't be mad at me and shit. It's like, <laughs> you dropped out, so like, you know, it's not my fault, man. It. I had crazy shit going on in my house, man. Melon tip has been waiting patiently. Melon tips a fucking movie. drunk like, Serbian motherfucker. That's why we like uh, Melon tip. I, I I like Melon tip, but like <laughs> the guy, <laughs> Melon, the the guy needs to like stop being obsessed about fucking Nazi fanboys and get a girlfriend. It's not. You don't so do that. Easy. Don't di- don't diss on my boy Melon tip like he's that. He's not from Scandinavia. He's from uh, Switzerland. Like you're doing the same thing that the Nazi fanboys do. You're He's just obsessed. being neutral about it. You're you're, you're gazing yeah. into the abyss, and eventually the abyss is gonna gaze back. The gay abyss. The gays are gonna gaze back at you. Yeah, if you keep staring at Nazi fanboys, eventually you'll become a Nazi fanboy. You're not immune to propaganda, Melanie. It's demonic possession, I tell you. <laughs> Satanic black. Melanite makes fun of Nazi fucking fanboys, please. but guess what? The only anti-Semitic person in our entire chat is fucking Melon Tip, so. Uh, and more dark. But... Okay, but, okay, <laughs> that, that is true. The, we, the only people who ever pick fights with the Jews in our chat are fucking Melon Tip and Lord Dark. And Melon Tip and Lord Dark are the only minorities we have in the chat. What what about our Hispanic friends like Angelo? And, uh, uh, they're not really minorities, though. Hispanics are really a minority in our chat. Um, <laughs> black people are a minority in our chat, and so are Slavs. Like, I think there's... G- Gio, the Italian, talking about black people are a minority in the chat. We have a, we have a lot of, like, Slavic people and Russians who follow us on social media and shit, but, like, Melon Tip's the only one in our chat. 
because there's a language barrier and it's hard to communicate with them a lot of the time. But Melon Tip speaks English well, so you know it is what it is. Um, anyway, um, Matt, Melon Tip can speak English, but he can't speak German, dude. That nigga's like, yeah, I'm fucking multilingual. I try to speak German to him. Nigga can't even fucking understand. Like, fuck uh, you, Melon Tip. That's because he's I'm, like I'm, too I'm, drunk to fucking to respond. Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm anti Melon Tip posting now. To be fair, he probably is. Well, he is multilingual. He probably speaks Serbian. He probably speaks Swiss. He speaks English well, and you know he probably speaks German okay. But yeah, he's just too fucking drunk to actually. His English is actually four, speaking in those languages. Yeah, Melon Tip says in the dude, chat that he's friends with two Jew, Jewish Zionists. Uh, by the way, I, I don't care, dude. They're a fucking racist, a uh, shit KKK. Yeah, no, Zion, Zionists are anti-Jew, dog. Like you haven't seen the fucking the Orthodox Jews protesting Israel, dude. I've seen yeah. them in New York, like IRL. <laughs> They're like these Israelis. <laughs> Fucking Jared Taylor's wife is Jewish, dude. I don't give a fuck. So is uh, Mike the Kike's wife. Or actually... Yeah, but they broke up. It's different. Jared Taylor's current wife. Here's the thing Jewish. with these like dudes and their Jewish wives. Like These women are really loyal to them. Like Their husband goes on the internet. And talks about destroying their people twenty four seven. They dude. still win them. How how many wig nats do you know who are actually <laughs> dating like a white woman? Most of them, like if they have girlfriends, are dating like Asian women. Did did you see girls. that uh, debate like, of of E Michael Jones versus Jared Taylor? I say E Michael Jones won, and I didn't even watch it. EMJ. Like, I, I already know both their arguments, and I know who I agree. E, with e, more, e, so. e Michael Jones could bring it up, but because E Michael Jones is super anti-Semitic, but Jared Taylor is not. Because Jared Taylor is like Jews are white, and you know, yeah. the, like they're included in the white ethno state, and and E Michael Jones is super racist, but like fine with black people. E, e super Michael ra- Jones super, doesn't it, believe in whiteness, it, though. He's so, even sorry, 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 I, I fucked up. E Michael Jones is really anti-Semitic. He's not he racist anti-Semitic, blacks. but it's from it's not from like a racial standpoint. It's from a religious standpoint. Dude, he fucking <laughs> calls, he, dude, he calls out atheistic Jews too, man. Like, watch, I don't like the Jews for the religion. Watch, watch. Watch this but he's fine with them if they convert to Catholicism genuinely. Because they don't have logos and uh, yeah. promote disordered shit. Jared Taylor was getting mad at E. Michael Jones. Well, I, I don't like necessarily, anti-Semitic. I don't necessarily agree with E. Michael Jones on everything either. Uh, I agree with. I like his book, The Slaughter of Cities, a lot. And like the, the breakup of ethnic neighborhoods, of like Italian neighborhoods and Irish neighborhoods. To move us into the suburbs and make us all white guys. Like, I agree wholeheartedly with that sentiment. And, like, I do endorse the fuck speak out of it, that Gio. Book. Speak it, Gio. Speak those East Coast facts. E. Michael Jones is literally calling fucking uh, Jared Taylor's wife a kike on the live stream. Like, live. Well, he's not wrong. Because he's a base trad cat who doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I, I shouldn't. I, I'm supposed to push my trad cat sympathies to the back for futurism forever, though. So. It's not like what? How did we get here? Um, you know, we're talking my question, Gio. We talked <laughs> Melon Tip got us here. So <laughs> yeah, we talked from about Mikeowski and Albert Dog. Melon Tip is actually a good artist, so I'll say that is, Melon Tip is a good artist. He is a good like artist, art. and I liked his poem. He doesn't want us to publish his poems anymore because I didn't add the colors in and the different fonts. Oh, um, come on, Melon Type. What the fuck? You come he on, says man. he'll post them on his own Twitter now. Uh, he's above us and all that so. wait he really said that <laughs> he didn't say it like that i'm exaggerating but he said he's gonna post his poems on his own twitter from now on all right i'll, yeah. I'll just thanks he appreciates it, it but i'll just uh... as long as as long as melon type will uh, let us publish his poems in the fucking design i'm fine with that all right. i do have one more mayakovsky song i want to read and i picked this one because it reminded me of uh now I Want to Be Your Dog by Iggy Pop and the Stooges. And it's called, And That's How I Became a Dog. So here's the poem. Well, this is really unbearable. All of me chewed up by spite. I don't get enraged by the way you would. I'd up and howl it all to bits, like a hound at the bare brown face of the moon. Nerves probably. I'll go out, have a little walk. But no one on the street gave me any relief. Some woman shouted about good evening. I have to respond. 
She's someone I know. I want to, but I feel I just can't speak human. What kind of disgrace is this? Am I dreaming? I patted myself, same as before, the same face that I'm used to. I touched my lip, and underneath my lip was a fang. I quickly covered my face like I was blowing my nose. I rushed home, doubling my pace. I carefully cut around the policeman's beat, and suddenly there's a deafening officer, a tail. I passed my hand over and froze. In my mad gallop, I didn't notice this thing, more serious than any fang from under my jacket. A tail was fanning out and curling up from behind, big, doggish. Now what? Someone began to yell, raising a crowd. A second was joined by a third, a fourth. They crushed an old woman, crossing herself. She yelled out something about the devil. And when bristling up their mustache brooms in my face, the crowd fell on me, huge, malicious. I stood on all fours and started barking. Arf, arf, arf. So that's the poem. Um, I like that one. It was nice, you know. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Yeah, me too. I like Maya Coxie. I like his poems are, like, short. Yeah. I'm that, that's the one thing I dislike about uh, fucking Ezra Pound. Like, those niggas' poems are so long. I get lost. Yeah, I'm reading the cantos now. I've been reading it on and off for, like, a year. And, yeah. It's, it's long. Like, he's a great wordsmith, but... His poems are lengthy. Um, I can't read poetry like that. Like, I don't devour it like a novel. Like, you know, poems have to be long, bro. Yeah, I mean, there are, there is like epic poetry, like Homer and all that, and like there's a place for it. But S same with music, though. I, I I like punk music. I like shit that's direct and to the point, and you know. Trim all the fat and just no bullshit, straight to the point. Um, yeah, I don't like esoteric writings or anything like that. It's hard to read and hard to understand what they're trying to say. I love esoteric writings, but you have to like be in the right mindset and understand the references they're making. Yeah, it takes time to understand it. You have to read it a few times. That's why I like it, it, though. It's very elitist. All of Picabia's poems were really short, too. Um, well, not all of them, but like most of the ones we read last week were like really short, like one stanza short. It's like grindcore or something, like everything's under 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, so I don't know, thoughts on um, this poem in particular. I mean. Something I, I do would... want to bring up is Mayakovsky is always a character in his own poem. So, like, when he's writing this, he is the dog. Um, yeah. The dog. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he, he, like we said, he grew up in poverty. Um, when he first got started in art, like, he lived in uh, this, like, shitty apartment with no furniture, apparently. He couldn't afford a proper suit for his poetry reading. So he just kind of had this makeshift costume he wore. Um, and like Marinetti was definitely not like that. He came from money. He was well-traveled and cultured. Uh, Mayakovsky's like a real street dude. who's like kind of a hooligan, a bit of a, a, a rap scallion. He's like mischievous and all that. Um, yeah. That's what I think the uh, message behind the story is. When uh, you said about that woman like saying hello to him, and you just like fuck off. Yeah, he doesn't know how to respond. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I like that poem a lot. I can't like it's hard to explain why I liked it. It just resonated with me. Yeah, she, some woman shouted about good evening. I have to respond. She's someone I know. I want to, but I feel I just can't speak human. Yeah, it may be about social anxiety, especially the yeah. part where he's like, the cops are following me, that yeah. kind of shit. Anyway, on that note, um, does anyone have final thoughts on anything we've talked about tonight? Mayakovsky um, or 
futurism and the Soviet Union. This won't be the last Russian futurism episode we do, but I felt it was long past due to show some acknowledgement to Russian futurism. We're all aware of it. It's just uh, the emphasis has been on Italian futurism. I know a lot more about it. Um, but open mic, final thoughts before we wrap up. Uh, I got it. Oh, go on, Seth. I'm sorry. I uh, know it's all good. I was just gonna say it's been pretty fun listening to Mikoski poems. Yeah, I had fun doing this. Um, thanks for coming on, Seth. Um, I'm not see, leaving yet. Yeah, um, j- just saying. CSD. Uh, what did you want to say? Uh, what do you think? Uh, futurism is more compatible with uh, Marxism or uh, fascism? Def- mm. uh, definitely fascism, because Marxism is inherently anti-nationalist. I think uh, it depends what kind of futurism. Like, Russian futurism is different from Italian futurism. So I think it's, like, unique to the culture. Um, I do think uh, Italian communists rejected futurism outright. They had their supporters going on over there, but... uh, Communists in Italy kind of rejected futurism. They didn't like the ultra-nationalism. They didn't like, you know, the glorification of war um, and a lot of other elements of it. Marinetti's futurism. So it made sense for him to attach themselves to fascism in the context of Italy at that time. Um, And in Russia at the time, it probably made sense to attach themselves to Bolshevism. But, uh, you know, how did they know Stalin was going to come into power and, you know, throw them all under the bus? Um, In the 21st century, I don't think, like, you know, who should futurists attach themselves to? Like, I don't think futurism is a fully fleshed out political ideology. Like, it's kind of more like a direction that a fully fledged out ideology can go in. Um, no one pretends that futurism is like a political philosophy or something. Like, yeah. you do it, like it, it doesn't stand on its own like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. In my opinion, when I look at like, the American third position movement, it just seems to be like every like org that's ever like come about like New Frontier, fucking the fuck Patriot Front. They all they all just seem like fucking like very cons- socially conservative people and people yeah. that are, are like stuck in like the American past. Like New Frontier's focus is the New Frontier of America when it was yeah. doing American exceptionalism, and like Patriot Front. Like all, all I know about them is that like I read their like manifesto and they're just like like white wig nats who like want to like. Pres- preserve like the Anglo-Saxon uh, uh, people, the of the American people. Yeah, yeah, they just Yay. use like, Nazis aesthetics. Yeah, neither one of them are terribly relevant to futurism. Um, yeah, uh, I'd say right now, contemporary wise, futurism would probably find more ground within communists, specifically communists who actually believe that the point of communism is to destroy the old world, the current state of things, and the uh, uh, cultures of the past rather than upholding some kind of dogmatic uh, trad fucking calf view of uh, American society and shit like that. Like the new fucking socialist patriots, quote unquote, which are becoming a thing after a bunch of fucking retards start reading dang. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, to that uh, too that yeah it does seem like um it futurism would be more compatible with marxism because that's of its so- pro-industrialization that socialist patriotism shit is so obviously fucking astroturf by russia like all those niggas fucking work with or work for rt yeah so site site quick question on twitter today you said that like the Chinese People's Party is oh. le- legit fascism, um, which is probably going to be a... Wow, you, you, something you and Sultanis actually agree on. No, that's where I got it from. He's the one that got me on that. Yeah. But, so that's, what, uh, that's, what, that's what retarded, though. I'm not... I ironically kind of don't consider myself a fascist anymore, but, but like, that's a retarded take, man. I, um, it's a... Uh, it's kind of an inside joke, because... Uh, 
we were looking at the me and some friends were talking about how this small account became big because everyone just started quote tweeting it because it'd say retard shit. And it went from like I think nine hundred followers to like eleven thousand in like uh two months. These are just always get quote tweeted by uh fucking liberals and uh uh yeah. uh fucking Stalinists because they'd be like, Oh, I love Cuba but I hate Fidel that kind of shit. And so I was just like, here, what you need to start a controversial thing, get quote tweeted a lot to gain followers. So I was just like, China's fascist. What are, what are your actual thoughts on the China question? Because, like, uh, you, you have people like Zoltanis who insist that China's fascist. You have people like Paz who say it's entirely communist. Um, I don't think it's either exactly, um, but uh, I'd probably say if I'm gonna be dead ass and like genuine, I'd probably say state wise, it's closer to the corporatist model of the fascist government of Italy than the one that Marx describes or even any communist describes. Uh, I won't say it is fascist though, out of their views on the nation being purely uh, ethnic rather than cultural that a lot of fascists pushed. Because if I'm not mistaken, fascism did not uphold, like, your skin color has to be white in order to be considered Italian, or you can't be fucking from Africa but raised in Italy and still be considered Italian. Uh, while in China, I think you actually had to be Han to be considered Chinese. Okay. Is that correct in my yeah, I think there's, it, like, in many ways, it, the Chinese state has obviously reject, like, has abandoned Marxism in many ways. Like, when it comes to nationalism and, uh, and also it's now taking more influence from like Confucianism and uh, Carl Schmitt too. Yeah. Dude, Carl Schmitt stuff is such a bullshit. So Thomas was telling me that I looked into it, and there was like one guy. And like a in the, like in the Chinese party pushes a Carl Schmidt stuff. It's it, not. Like a it's old. one of the. It's one of their one of their prominent intellectuals. Yeah, it's a very small group, but it is becoming more more popular though. With oh, like Zoltanis Zol, Zol, Zol put puts it like fucking like the Chinese Communist Party is going to turn into like uphold Carl Schmidt thought or some shit. It's it's probably like Steve Bannon being like some Evolian traditionalist. Like, yeah. You know, he knows who Evola is. He's probably read him before, but, like, how much does it actually inform his policy or whatever? Like, you know, there's someone like that with Carl Schmidt in China. The, the Chinese party is way more culturally, uh, like, nationalist than ethnically nationalist, honestly. Like, the reason they're cracking down on the Uyghurs is because of fucking uh, religious shit. Like, they're, they're very anti-religion. China is, or anti-Islam at least, because they see it as a threat to the Chinese state. Uh, they believe that uh, the the Uyghurs or what or whatever or that region they're in is like embedded with like Islamic fundamentalists, which I don't know how true that is though. But yeah, I do know. I mean, yeah, been, it is. I know there's it, been a few terrorist attacks there though. So it is, but like, so is fucking, you know, a bunch of other places in the world. I don't know. I don't really care either way, but I think Zoltanis pushes the China's fascist thing a little too much. I think it's kind of bullshit. Wait, Melantip, is that true that the fucking Patriot Front dudes are playing Roblox? That's Jesus not true. Christ, Melantip, is, Melantip is retarded, dude. Melantip that is like, true. Brah. Yeah, Mel Melantip, you, see, you, see, a skin, you see a skin in a game and think they're Patriot Front members. Like, you no, see a fucking... True. Melantip, like, sees a fat chick wearing a skull mask and is like, look at this Adam Wapen member. Like, man, <laughs> your brain damage. So you're going to tell me you're not going to believe him? I believe Melon Tip. I believe him, too. I believe Melon no Tip. Definitely Hashtag believe, believe in all women. <laughs> I remember uh, that one time I when I, like... Just hate but... Melon Tip, there's no such thing as a fucking Patriot Front Discord. Like, you're a they, that, That's literally how they organize is through fucking Discord. They have, like, I mean, five uh, different Okay, Discords. in, like, 2000 fucking eight, like, 17, nigga, I know people in Patriot Front, like... Yeah, I also know people in Patriot Front. They're all gay and, like, 15 from, like, the suburbs <laughs> of Boston. 
That sounds <laughs> accurate. I don't know. Get what inside, what get get up front. Yeah, when I when I saw these like lefties on like Twitter saying that this is like the upcoming of like neo fascism, I just like rolled my eyes because everything I looked into them, they they just seem to be like like clowns that are just like walking around, just like, like they, got, they 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 did a fucking rally, and I think like not to, I don't remember what city it was, but like they got their ass kicked by like a bunch of white guys who were telling them to fuck off. And then they had to run into their, like, U-Haul vans, which they were using for transportation, and left because, like, none of them lived in the cities. They lived in the suburbs of those cities. Um, and then there was another time, I think around July, 4th of July, when all the BLM shit was going on. They had to schedule, like, a rally at, like, midnight because they knew there wouldn't be any counter-protesters. Because they knew they'd get fucking mogged. They're kind of jokes. Uh, I think the most recent thing, they went to an anti-abortion rally and a bunch of boomers started yelling at them. Oh, Garby. Dude, boomers are the uh, are the biggest defenders of uh, liberalism. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I hate boomers. But... Uh, speaking but of that... One Patriot Front is getting shouted down by boomers. I think that's kind of funny. Yeah. Personally. I hate boomers, man. I don't care. <clears throat> Leave the boomers alone, man. It's not their fault. <laughs> no, it is their fault. It's their fault we're so fucked right now, man. Fuck the no. boomers. Boomer side boomer no. side now. I think that's no, a it's more the conditions they the grew up in, and that's how they became the way they are. As currently, they're probably above other neo Nazi groups because, like, none of their leaders have been found with, like, a gigabyte of child porn. Yeah, which, yeah. you know, and they had, and they had decent optics. The, the, the bar is set pretty low, so, you know. <laughs> uh, well, at least in James Mason case, he, he produced his own child porn. She was a marriageable <laughs> age. Not much better. Marriageable <laughs> age. I know it's not much better. <laughs> Marriageable age, Bob. Marriageable age. <laughs> I mean, fucking Mary in the Bible got married and pregnant and she was fucking 13, so shaking my head. Uh, speaking of fucking James Mason, like, The Theocrat is the worst book of all time. Like, I yeah, yeah, yeah. It we, just for that reason. It's the worst book ever written. Um, so I recommend that you should, like, Read it if you can still find a copy. I got it off siegeculture.com. This is what a white race is dying. <laughs> you guys just don't want to do to children. <laughs> yeah, because you're not willing to marry a woman of marriageable age, Bob. Marriageable wow, age. are futurists really moralizing having sex with children? Isn't that no. against futurism? We're, we're just shit posting. Futurism is not, like, it's not like amoral, man. I know. I'm. I'm joking, and I've seen people make that kind of comment. Yeah, well, that's, the, that's the, the, the glorification of you thing. People get it twisted and think like, you know, <laughs> we have a preference for really young people or something. But no, nothing like that. It's just, uh, you know, life is sweetest when you're young and the most free and the most able to, you know, do shit. When you get old, you get weighed down by like all kinds of responsibilities and shit. And, you know, there's all this social pressure to like do the right thing. And, you know, I'm not that old. I'm 35, which like oh, Jesus for, this Christ. for this panel makes me the resident boomer. But it's like old man Geo. <laughs> you do start feeling it, though. Like you're less rebellious than you used to be more averse to risks like yeah i'd rather just stay in and have a quiet night i don't want all that wildness around um you know geo tell us about the good old days like back back in the 90s like back in the 2000s even like i was a little kid in the 90s but more like late 90s i listened to blink 182 a lot when i was a kid i like skateboarding and shit <laughs> And shoplifting, I like that too. But you know, uh, yeah, I'm the kids of the '90s were different than the kids of today, though. Like, I didn't spend all day in front of a fucking computer playing video games and shit. Like, we still went outside back then. I mean, we, like, you know, I, I think we were less socially awkward because of it. Like, you know, 
I was into like skateboarding and graffiti, all those things I had to go outside to do. So like I met people and, you know, I'd interact with real people in real life. It wasn't all internet based or like talking shit on the internet or fucking playing video games for 12 hours a day. Like, I think that's been lost. Like people should like, it's okay to like scrape your knee or like get a couple scars Start some fires, get in a fight or two, like you know. Old man Jill is reminiscing about the past. On my glory days. Yeah, <laughs> back in my day, fuck it, the women were hotter. Yeah, Gio, let us know how it was to walk to school <laughs> and all that shit. I, I still walk to work in the fucking snow with like. Yeah, Gio doesn't have a car, dude. He's yeah. not, not old enough to drive. I he still... lives in Canada, bro. Their public transportation ain't that bad. There's a fucking storm going on outside, and like I was worried the power would go out, but it's held up. Oh, you're it's getting the wind up. too. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, no, it's supposed to be a shit show. Like it started when I got off work, but it wasn't that bad. I'm looking outside now. It's still not really that bad. I guess it's there's more snow now than there was before. But we have like bad know. wind. I was afraid I I wouldn't be able to make it because like if the power went out because like yeah. the cables are just like whipping outside. And the same you, way, solid dude from our attacks. I'm kind of I'm kind of you know disappointed. What was that? You did defend Stalin from our attacks. Well, I honestly didn't know much about this dude, so I was interested to learn. Oh, yeah. All right, so Stalin um, purged the futurists. He thought it was degenerate art in much the same way um, Hitler did. And he pushed for, like, so Soviet realism, which is a lot more, like, less abstract, less crazy, more straight-laced and... Uh, it's like a photograph. It means what it is. There's like not a lot of symbolism. Or... I just picture Stalin as like the embodiment of the working class of Russia at that time. Nigga, he was never working class. He was fucking bourgeois. Yes, he was. He was poor no, and shit. He, he was a criminal. Was bro. Shit. How, he how banks many and niggas shit. have no, you he shot? Was, he was lumping. How many niggas? He was a lumping proletariat. Yeah, Stalin was lumping, dog. Yeah, he was lumping proletariat. He was born bourgeoisie. And he was the richest per per well, what person. What is bourgeoisie in, in Georgia? That's like having the nicest tin shack on like fucking Skid Row, <laughs> California. Yeah, yeah, it's a social relationship. He had a, he had a nice in, living in Georgia, Georgia, even compared yeah, to like. You- Alcaz, no, you would not it. want a quote unquote nice living in fucking like 1900s uh, Georgia. Whatever, still bourgeoisie. He lived in half a, a, a like half a house, dude. No, like, I'll, I'll look at half up. a I room, a fucking- bro. I wrote a biography on his living conditions were so booty. His parents sent him to like a religious school. <laughs> yeah, he was like yeah. the only kid who fucking was able to get in that school from his entire village. I don't no, know, I Stalin think... got his ass kicked by his dad. The like... yeah, he got abused. Dude. Like a real and man. Stalin, and... and Stalin grew up and he started kicking everybody else's ass. Like a real man, and that doesn't happen nearly enough with you fucking Zoomers today. I, I, I just like, like Stalin. Also, like, on the lumpen, <laughs> on the lumpen accusation, right. uh, he only started robbing banks when the Bolsheviks wanted him to rob banks. He killed his like first dude at like fifteen, supposedly. Yeah, dude, sounds like a thug. Like you know, I don't agree with his policies or everything he did. Um, but that's like the whole thing. If might makes right, and like. Isn't I, Stalin I, one of the most like I can kind of admire the man people by brute like, force in history? He didn't get any handouts, like he struggled and like you know, he did illegal things to get like so did Hitler the, too. The people after the Russian Revolution did yeah, it, they but, wanted a king. Uh, Hitler Hitler was never a fucking criminal though. He was always like this beggar on the street. Well, I never painting he was for... a criminal, but he struggled. Yeah, like Hitler's yeah, still I'm, I'm pretty sure like, like he doesn't Stalin and Hitler would have go at it, bro. He would sleep that off. No, nah, Hitler Hitler was a faggot. pussy dog. Like everything I've read about Hitler, he was like literally like a pussy. He'd like a droid competition at all times. Dude, he yeah. he like Nigga, he just he, he just sitting around. He volunteered. He volunteered for World War One. How the fuck is that a point yeah. confrontation? He won an iron. Yeah, no. Nah, all he did was like, all he did was like that. fucking. <laughs> all he did was fucking like walk like fucking notes like. Nigga, he got fucking gassed. What the no, hell are you no, talking about? Everybody in history, no one wanted Hitler. Art school, the German army. <laughs> 
He was, well, a, shitty, he was a shitty writer and a but shitty. He literally paper, volunteered bro. and got accepted in the German army. What are you talking about? My dad, the those. Austrian army. They said, "No, nah, we don't want you, bro." No, he left Austria so he could fight the German army. No, he first tried to do go with the Austrians and they rejected him. That's why he went to the yeah, German. Take your ass out of here, up. Hitler. <laughs> Dude, like, imagine if Hitler was fucking in, instead of like that fucking uh, weirdo. Who, who's his name again? I don't know. Um, I don't really think the uh, the class background of someone really determines their revolutionary spirit. It depends on their actions right now. It can have an effect on it, but like, for example, Bukharin, uh, or was it Bakunin? Which is Bakunin? Bakunin. Bakunin. Uh, he was born a uh, aristocrat. But he gave up like his wealth and inheritance and the fucking trad orthodox wife he was promised to to be like an anarchist. So it's like at some point, like I think what comes to mind right now is someone who continues like what they're born class they're born into and don't reject it in favor of revolutionary uh, acts is like Haas, who like talks about it but continues to live that petty bourgeois privileged lifestyle and completely rejects any actual struggle. Dude, Haas says he wants to be in charge of the CPUSA, but all he fucking does is like fucking yell at people, dude. Like he talked learned... about he uh, he said that he wants to start a media comp- media company, and if the police try to unionize, he'd like have them arrested. Yeah, dude, he's because a unions he's... are reactionary. He should just do it the black Hebrew Israeli eyes too. Like take it dude, off. Yeah, no, Haas, do that. Have you fucking <laughs> seen Haas talk about like how we already live under socialism with his like during that stream? He did. Yeah. Like, he's a fucking retard because he's, like, he comes from a wealthy uh, Libyan immigrant family that lives in, like, upper Michigan and, like, the suburbs. He's never really had any chance to struggle or anything like that. It's pure privilege where he comes from. So I'd say that has a say in things. But when people are like, oh, Karl Marx came from a wealthy Jewish family, that doesn't mean he didn't understand anything because, like, he still was able to see the uh, conditions of the working class that doesn't really have a say on things but if it's like if he was then saying oh the workers are fucking retarded it needs to be the petty bourgeois that leads the revolution then yeah i'd probably say that his class background has a say on things i don't know i just kind of feel like it's kind of a cop out when people would do that you know i admire people who like came from nothing and made something out of themselves because, yeah. like, you know, they actually had to work harder for it. Like, they didn't get any handouts. Hitler went from Dude. being homeless to the fucking leader of the country. Like, yeah, on, but at the, at the same time, like, I, I just don't admire the dude. He's like a law cow to me. Um, Hitler went from blowing guys in prison to blowing guys what? outside of prison. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. Um, he only has one ball sack. And wasting Germany's money on magic fairy tales and shit. <laughs> I think that I don't think that was a thing. I think there was like a cult elements the same way there were like Islamic elements within like the Nazi H- party. Hitler but... was pretty anti occult. It, yeah. it was like yeah. I, agree, but, uh, I do agree <laughs> with what Scythe is saying though. Like just because you come from poverty or something, it doesn't like mean you're gonna be a better revolutionary, right? Like, yeah, it's just like oh. <clears throat> those are unfortunate also, circumstances, and it hardens some people and they rise to the occasion. But most people just like sink in, you know, their surroundings and become a product I, of their environment or whatever. That's why I respect people who like rise above it. You know, they yeah. face actual adversity. Hitler did too, right? But it's like. I just don't like Hitler. Like it's like it's hard for me to like give a shit. Yeah. I like, like then. I just think he's kind of a like, big old loser. Yeah, he comes off like he was like a hella trad fag. Um, I don't think he was a good painter. I, like, Do I you read bring Mein up Kampf the picture of this man? Dude, he never even went to art school. I, I, I read Mein Come Kampf. On. It was a difficult book. Yeah, he never, never got to art school because he like applied to like the most difficult position and like all the instead of like the abstract artist they fucking hated. And he got blown the fuck out by because he he was like he was like incredibly like bad at drawing people, dude. Geo, yeah. bring up show, show show a picture of Hitler in the leader hoses. This is your leader. Okay, leader hoses are epic. I don't give a fuck what you say, man. Leader hoses are epic. 
be nice to Alcaz. No anti-Germanism. Uh, and well, I do have a quite a serious question for you. Uh, look, I'm like, okay if anti-Anglo posting, anti-German posting, and anti-Hitler posting, but at least make it fucking accurate. Like, don't say shit that's not true. Like, come on. Uh, we wouldn't want to be well, like I do have a or some shit. You. I don't uh, like Mark, dude. I think Mark's a law cow. But I let's, let's see if he ask his question, bro. Uh, Angela, what's your thoughts on Russian futurism anyways? You haven't really said much on it. This is all a big learning experience to me. I just, I just wanted a Stalinist sympathizer voice on the panel. And, um, you know, we didn't really talk about, like, that much. Like, <clears throat> we, we it got brought up, but we didn't talk about it in detail. We like, talked more about art and poetry. Yeah. I wanted to keep yeah, a focus as on Mayakovsky for like the body of the podcast. We we like talk some shit along the way, but I think he's new to Russian futurism and doesn't have a strong opinion on it yet. But you should check it out though. Yeah, they're cool. Um yep. Mayakovsky's a great poet and a great man. And um I do want to read this uh passage from the translator's note because I, I liked it. I thought it was good. Just give me a sec. Let me find it quick. Um, <clears throat> all right, here it goes. Like To close out, Mayakovsky's appeal to contemporary Western audience is not surprising from a certain perspective. He looks more like an American rock star than a Russian Silver Age poet. The packed and rowdy performances, the embrace and mass and multimedia, the cultivation of image, the promotional gimmicks, the mix of controversy and colossal popularity are overall more characteristic of Elvis than of Mayakovsky's literary peers. And like a proper rock star, Mayakovsky was an iconoclast. When a slap was published, the dominant players on Russia's literary scene were the symbolists. For over a decade, poets like Alexander Bloch, Valery Bryusov, and Konstantin Balmont have been producing refined and elegant work inspired by the beautiful worlds they envision beyond the physical plane, worlds they believe to be accessible only to the artist. Divorced from the social and political, they aspired towards the occult, the esoteric, and the exotic. They presumed the role of high priests, seeking to reveal the transcendent through their poetry in a fusion of art, religion, and depravity. Next to these sophisticates, it's not surprising that Mayakovsky impressed people as an uncouth hooligan. Gumliov compared the futurists to hyenas. It's not so different from, from how Frank Sinatra's, sorry, it's not so different than Frank Sinatra's reaction to Elvis in 1957. Rock and roll is sung and written for the most part by cretinous goons. It manages to be the martial music of every sideburn delinquent on the face of the earth. The most brutal, ugly, desperate, vicious form of expression it has been my misfortune to hear. I, I just liked uh, that description of Mayakovsky and futurism in general. Um, it's like, um, you know, older, more respectable kinds of music, not liking the youthful rebellion of uh, rock and roll at the time. Like Frank Sinatra not liking Elvis. Um, it's kind of punk rock too. Like the punks rejected the hippies and wanted to create something new. And like all that shit's played out. We're doing our own thing that speaks to our own generation, you know? Um, like why the fuck should we bow down to the Beatles and shit? And yeah, the Beatles are awesome. Seven. Fuck you guys. I think we talked about that one time when I said, uh, yeah, uh, that's what it is. I kind of agreed with. Uh, the Beatles are eternal. Futurism was basically just proto punk. Yeah, no, I can futurism was was totally proto punk, and um, yeah, in the same way the uh, futurists rebelled against the symbolists. I guess there was an equivalent in Russia too, um, but like Marinetti has that um, one article uh we we renounce our symbolist masters and like Donzio was a symbolist he was part of that generation and that's what the futurists were trying to get away from that's right our our, our sss the beatles are gay sorry i lost my train of thought but no yeah there's a lot of parallels between like the original punk movement 
and um, futurism. Uh, they both rejected those who came before them. There is an emphasis on youth, on violence, on aggressiveness, on fearlessness. Uh, it sounds like the performances were more or less the same. Like fights would break out, cops would show up, you know, riots would start. Like it was dangerous and uh, it was happening. It's kind of why I feel an affinity for both punk music and futurism. Um, I don't see any parallels of that going on in the youth culture anymore. I mean, because kids just stay inside and play video games and, you know, they're upset, like, when their feelings get hurt or some shit, you know. They're not fighting, like, the powers. They're not, like, they're not, they're not doing shit that's important. Like, they're just playing video games and shit posting on the internet. Some of them have, like, are into radical politics and shit. But, you know, there's a reason it never goes anywhere. Um, yeah. Kids need, need to stop being such fucking bitches. I think kids need to stop being such bitches. Yeah, they need to, like, um, you know. I don't know start, about that. Start fires and, you know. Like we need some hard things. times, Gio. Yeah, we need hard times. Like Hard we times need... create gay men. Gio. <laughs> hard times. Gio, you could create hard times for yourself right now if you wanted to. I'm living hard times, man. I never <laughs> yeah. seen Gio's <laughs> place. Yeah. That is yeah. Awesome. Bro, I live in the hood, dude. Yeah, why do, why do you need hard times, nigga? You're already living it. Well, I don't need this shit, but it's like the younger generations need this shit. I'm also 35. Like, I'm probably not going to be getting tired of patrolling the hood. He needs to pass the torch. There's no worthy heir to, like, my chaos throne, so. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I'm there's no hood. successor to the hood. <laughs> I'm but, uh, yeah, I think this was a good podcast. I think we we're kind of drinking and shit posting at this point. Um, I think it was pretty informative. Yeah, I, I hope so. And now, like, Scythe, you got your own YouTube channel? Nah, that's gay. No, he has his own magazine. I have my own, I have my own yeah, magazine. I've got my own. Uh, only fans. I got my own Finboy harem. You know, oh. it's called Haram because it's both a sin but also pleasurable. And he annihilated Haas in debate on politically provoked, but I couldn't find that the, the video. I, they may have deleted it because, like, it turned to a shit fest because Haas fans started mogging the fucking comments. No, it's it's like, on like uh, Peter also, Wiley's um, fucking YouTube channel. So. Yeah, they got yeah. banned recently, like a few days ago. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't find it when I was searching. Who got it, banned? Right? Oh, what what oh, I can yeah, see yeah, yeah, like Britney like, is literally like a like white identitarian <laughs> nationalist dude. Like, I just literally found that out. The yeah, question she, that she was originally a leftist. Minds, hope Britney is, is okay. Is she, should, she should come on here. Is Britney really? Yeah, like, like Britney, if you want to come on here, Doug, like uh, we're always, yeah, we're always like, you're, you're always welcome. On. Britney, if you, you want to sit, if you want to sit on at the beginning of this podcast, we ain't anti-Semitic. Uh, if he picks or you ain't Jewish, but <laughs> I yeah, can Brittany, see why. If, if you don't have a job now, we can always use you here. Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> my secretary yeah. and shit. That was a shit show debate, though. Thanks for reminding me of it. I, I thought you did well, though. I like. I really like the futurism portion. Um, yeah. of it. like many dog and ask the question. And Haas went off uh, liquidating the past. He sounded ridiculous. I really like that portion. I kind of forget the rest of it. You were trying to expose him for doxing somebody or something, and I thought you got yeah. derailed with that shit. Um, it got derailed because it, he just kept asking me where the evidence was, and I sent him the videos, and he was just like, that's not evidence. I'm just asking for the address so I can send it to their parents to threaten them so they stop talking to me. Yeah. Was that true? Like he did dox somebody? It, I yeah, I can send you the fucking videos uh, on Twitter. He was like uh, saying how he wanted to send like their messages from like his Discord to their parents. Like her parents are like Islamic fundamentalists, and she was like uh, trans. So that one yeah. ended well. Um, he wanted to send it to like uh, their school, uh, other shit. He wanted to put their leak their address 
and where they go to school and shit like that. Uh, and ironically enough, it was because I think they just call him a retard on his Discord. Yeah, not not cool, Haas. Yeah, you want me to send you that? Yeah, you can. Um, yeah. Plus, when I talked to Haas on the fucking like other crawl, like debate he had, dude, that 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 dude, he was literally asking everyone who hopped on the call to show their face because I'm pretty sure he wanted to dox all of us, or just has just have his fans dox all of us, dog. You showed your face, I, though. I, yeah, I don't, I don't give a fuck if they talk to me. <laughs> Didn't they, like, call you white or something? You're like, oh, I'm white? <laughs> uh, I accidentally joined it when he was spurging out, and I was like, I was like, I think he's gone, but I just hear him just spazzing out. I'm like, okay, I'll be back in, like, ten minutes. <laughs> Bro, how'd that even happen again? Like, was that... I think, was our, like... I think our Temio was the undisputed champion of that whole debate. Oh, he was. Personally. That was hilarious. <laughs> Shout out Artemio, wherever he is. He's in the Futurism Forever chats. Taz, he's a, he's you a have no fucking, warrior, that one. Taz, you have no fucking like, place to call someone like a fucking lazy piece of shit when all you do is like sit around like and yell at people on Twitch, dog. And s- stream on Twitch for 12 hours a day talking about nothing. You're a political streamer, but I don't see the politics, bro. You need to get back to your earlier content, Oz. Yeah, you had, good, Haas, you, you had good moments back then. Like it's just bullshit now. There's nothing there. Like there's nothing to like or dislike. Like, I'm not even mad at it. It's just like it's useless content. That I don't know why people watch this shit. Like <laughs> there's nothing there. It's nothing. Like uh, yeah, he's pretty much just a wool cow. Like yeah. if you know the people who like talk to him, but it is ironic the. Amount of people, because like people do eventually take him seriously at some point. That's why I tell him to just not even consider consider him a wool cow because he's just like so enamoring that you will be drawn into his bullshit. Uh, like for example, a bunch of neocots they got really into Haas and they were like, "Oh, he's fucking funny. That's why we watch all his streams and shit like that." But then they eventually just started being like, "Haas is correct. We need to be patriots." Marx was a patriot. Everyone, you, you're literally retarded. Marks with a patriot. But, uh, yeah. His Discord apparently is also really culty. Like, if he's close to being uh, ratioed on Twitter, he'll add everyone and tell him to go like his post so he's not ratioed. Yeah. The cold of has. <clears throat> he needs uh, to go outside more and be less online. I think, or, get, or get a job or some shit. Like, you know, something to occupy your time. Did you um, see the one? But there's another guy within his like circle called like Ezra, I think. Um, did you see the post I made where he, he was literally defending dog fighting as a traditional entertainment form in the United States, and that uh, the fucking uh, red boots <laughs> were kind of taken away from him? That's fucked up. I think the exact quote was uh, another example of how the reactionary left on in the seventies took away American culture. And that was wait, wait, wait. Who, 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 who's saying this? Uh, some guy uh, that's in hot. I think he does audio for Haas. Uh, he <sighs> made a post, and it was a post in regards to the Pope saying, "If you have dogs, you hate humanity because you're not having kids." Um, that's, that's so fucking stupid. It went from him being like, "Listen, eating dogs is okay," to him being like, "Dog fighting this is a traditional form of entertainment in the United States that was taken away from us." Uh, one of many reasons why I am not a traditionalist. The shit's retarded. And, I would uh, say like, uh, no, that doesn't even like count as traditionalism. That's like a bastardization of it. It kind of is tradition. Well, like Ezra says so. So, well, like cockfighting co- <laughs> in Hispanic culture, but like those are just fucking chickens. Like trads are weird. Like you know, their values are backwards and fucked up. Like, chickens are just as smart as dogs, dude. I don't give a fuck. I don't eat dogs because I like them. I don't look at chickens and be like, "Wow." Like, dogs, man's best animal. friend. Who would want to kill them? Mayakovsky <laughs> like dogs. Yeah, there's there's a lot of chickens on her, so it's like okay to like kill them, eat them. My, Mayakovsky was a dog, dude. Yeah, he wrote a poem about it. He, he was the he was the OG yeah. fairy. He, he was, was the OG. He was from the streets. He was he was the dog. He was he's a... actually of the canine persuasion. So <laughs> he was in the dog fam. Uh, actually. Giovanni, I hope you get reincarnated into a cat. 
Never do. Cats are stupid. Like I hate cats. I'll punch a cat. Gio to kind of do just to let his dog at me wrong, like, Yeah, Gio was telling me the other cat. day he likes to uh, step on cats when he's walking around outside. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, I hate whoa, cats, whoa, dude. I whoa, hate white cats. White momentum, dude. black brother Gio. <laughs> I hate them. I hate them. They're stupid. They're annoying. They're stupid. Like they're ugly. Like they don't do anything. They serve no purpose. Like they're good cats, house decoration. Cats dude, should house not fancy. exist. C cats eat <laughs> mice. <high time. laughs> Nigga, when's the last they time you saw even. a fucking mouse like shaking my head? They don't even exactly. They, like they're too fucking <laughs> awkward and lazy to even do that shit. Gio, Gio's gonna bring up the stat that like cats are like one of the most dangerous invasive species. Why have cats always been associated with satanic black magic? Because medieval ages, people were retarded and thought cats spread disease. <laughs> they do spread disease. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are dirty in the right conditions. They're dangerous. They're Dude, dangerous. I don't care what y'all say. Bobcats and mountain lions are amazing. No, they're pestilence, bro. They eat like sheep and shit. That's base, man. Sheep are pestilence. Fuck sheep. Once you start getting into the bigger cats, like lions and shit. And, you know. Jew, I hope a lion Listen, if there's no sheep, what, I hope what, a lion what do you expect Celtic and Anglo people to reproduce with? That's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about household cats that are black and... Uh, uh, Angelo yet again fucking associates saying Celtic shit is Anglo, like, fuck you, nigga. How am I supposed to know one white monkey from another white monkey? Like, do I <laughs> yeah, know the like, white man's uh, migration like patterns as well as Dude, you do? No, no, sorry. People think England, they think Anglo-Saxons. Nobody cares that, like, well, Saxons I'm sorry that Wales and like, inhabited yet. that region yet 2,000 years ago. Nobody cares, dude. We see England, we assume Saxons are getting mogged. Like, like the only Celtic people yeah. I ever known about is just what the Irish, the Scottish, and uh, the White Britons. That's uh, it. I thought there was Celtic Turks. Uh, <laughs> Celtic, Celtic Turks. Turk versus Celtic. Yeah, it's Turks. certainly possible. It's a spicy combo. So I don't know. I seen an Albanian man claim the Anglo-Saxons were Albanians. <laughs> Albanians are the original man in general. Like it all stems from Albania. Yeah, Adam, Adam so. and Eve. That shit was in Albania. <laughs> you didn't know that? No, I didn't. You know nothing of history, bro. Like you I don't. See, here, I sent you the uh, video, Geo. I'm currently watching as Haas fans are now going into my mentions about the uh, China tweet. So, Sites, I, I I got a question. Yeah. So how do you um when people say that Trotskyism is like um neoconservatism and liberalism that it's like it infiltrated all that do you think that's just like a big uh theory? Uh, I just call it retarded. Like again, there's multiple examples of Marxists becoming like conservatives. Like uh, for example, uh, one of the leaders of the Communist Party uh, who was about Stalinist became a uh, informant for the CIA after he was kicked. Um, I don't see there really being a parallel. It's like saying how, uh, it, I'm it, someone's gonna say something. It, oh yeah, uh, they just took like certain elements of Trotskyism just without Marxism. That's about it. Like that's there's not it's not Trotskyist at all. Uh, I won't even say they took that. That again, it's just like finding conclusions without any real substance. I could say is the it, same is thing it about... Is like the left's, like, Jewish conspiracy at that point to you? Pretty much. I could say the same thing about anarchists. I could say anarchists are inherently fascist because a lot of anarchists became fascist when Mussolini came to power. Giovanni's gonna love that. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, if Zolt was watching this stream when you were, like, China's fascist, that man was probably rubbing his hands together like Birdman. <laughs> Like, it's yeah. it is true though the roots of Italian fascism, anyways, like are in anarchism, not in conservatism. So I don't know why like there's such a strong conservative bend to people who call themselves fascists anymore. Um, Sites nowadays. That's because of Hitler, dog. Like Hitler was a trick. <laughs> an asshole. He like changed. Yo, is that Artemio in the comments? No, like Ar Artemio is. Uh, Vic, like victimize Chungus or punish Chungus, something like that. 
Victimized Chungus. Victim of Chungus. Yeah, victim. <laughs> <laughs> you caught that, Alcaz. The victim of Chungus. <laughs> Victimized Chungus. <laughs> it makes sense, man. Artemio was uh, discriminated against for being black. I, I knew him before I knew you guys indirectly because I would always see him in like um the Hispanic live streams. I would always see like victims of Chungus like saying like some of the most bizarre shit. <laughs> I like it when he goes like he's people's chat and say I shit myself. <laughs> he's only fifteen years old. He's been like my my favorite is when I saw him on like an Andy stream. And he got Andy tight because he's like, Andy, I think you should like go back to your people in Nigeria and lead your tribe <laughs> to victory. He is like, I find the dude hilarious. Like, he makes me laugh more times than not. Like, he's a genuinely funny person. He is uh, like the head of the George Floyd like memorial team. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all like shit posts layered on top of shit posts though. It's hard to tell what he really thinks. Bro, about he anything. has single handedly kept George Floyd's memory alive. He has done more it's for true. that man it's than true. any black man has ever done. <laughs> it's true. He is like, the, no one loves he's the greatest more shit than, poster of the twenty twenties. I think he was the most influential man on the internet in twenty twenty. In like ten years we're gonna see a piece by him, like why George Floyd was if not the most influential man in my life, but no, Art, tell me, why don't you like, why don't you like write an essay about George Floyd, dog? Like, you seem to like know more about him than I am. Yo, than he's unironically spirit. just gonna like get like a scholarship and all that because he's gonna be a George Floyd that. historian, dog. Yeah, our, our young generation is clearly lost. Clearly lost. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what to say no more. These youngsters <laughs> is running around, busting off guns. In crowds, kids is getting killed, and it's clearly degeneration after this. You see clearly what I lost. mean? Without Artemio, Gio would not be able to utter the words of. No, of I would. I, w- I would not be able to recite that from memory the way I just did. Like, Ar- Artemio, Artemio, when you Artemio. when, when we're done with this do podcast, Mary, I expect you to give us a quote voice. George Floyd word for word. I've okay. still never even seen the clip of George Floyd saying that. I just heard Artemio say it like a thousand <laughs> living times legend. In the chat. <laughs> so I this whole need to this, see who George Floyd is to speak his words. <laughs> this entire podcast is dedicated to uh, Artemio for being the raddest dude on the internet. This for you, bro. Um, if you watch it, <laughs> if you have internet. Anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap it up though, because like we're not talking Mayakovsky anymore. We're just yeah, it was, yeah. It was nice talking to you boys. Yeah, yeah. Okay. goodbye. The Beatles are awesome. Fuck the Beatles. No, the, Beatles suck. <laughs> the Beatles. The White Album is the only good album because it's actually experimental music. Yeah. Happiness is a warm gun is a good song. I say that much. Maxwell Silver Hammer is good too. All right, that Helter Skelter is good. Okay. Salute, peace. Yeah, Helter.